Good day, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. And this is my last video of the year. It's Friday, it's December 30th. Tomorrow is the 31st of the year. Um, I think Tuesday when the markets open, it'll be, I think, uh, second or third of the year already. But this is it for us, folks. This is it. It's about 7.55 in the morning. The market's gonna open up in about an hour and 35 minutes. And I cannot believe this year is over. I, I remember doing my first video of the year of 2022. And unfortunately, the market has ended up exactly as we predicted. Very choppy, very uh, volatile, a lot of non-directional bias and a lot of pain in both directions. Now, as you could see here, the Dow's now down 124 points and the NASDAQ is down 100 points. And I wanna show you something before we begin because today's Friday and I usually get into my algo corner on Friday. So I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about that. And I wanna show you what algos have been doing to the market the last few days. And uh, what I'll do is here, I'll, I'll go to a three minute, uh, to a three month chart so you could see this price action here. But if you look at the volume throughout this price action here, you'll see the volume is about half of what it normally is, the trading volume. And these moves we've been seeing, they're extra exaggerated. Like for example, I'll add a zero to this so we can have an actual Dow analysis. So look at this, 33,200, 32,600. So we're talking 33,100 to 20, 32,500, 600 points a day. So what, what these algos are doing right now is they're really shaking the market up both direction, up and down, two, 300 points up, two, 300 points down, but there's very little volume in these moves. And what these algos are doing, and, I, and this is where I wanna be really clear with you, they're trying to shake you out of your stops. They're trying to shake the retail traders out of their position. That's their job. They're trying to arbitrage the market, but when the volume is low, the arbitraging, there's a price to pay for the arbitrage for volume, and that's higher liquidity. And that's kind of what happened right here. And this is what I try to tell people to, to pay attention to. If you look at the Dow right here, look at this. You will see that the Dow looks like it's ready to break out. Matter of fact, if I was looking at this chart right here, and if it was the 13th of December, this to me looks like a classic breakout. Look at this, flat, right, flat bottom, a, a nice congestion, consolidation, which usually happens before a breakout, and then price action trading above previous week's high or taking out a one month high. Looks like a classic breakout. And remember, this doesn't look like a breakout when a stock is already running like this. This looks like a breakout from a flat range, right? So what you're seeing is you're seeing a very convincing breakout. And I'm, I could assure you, I could promise you, I can't guarantee you because I don't have the evidence, but I just, Take my word on this. So many people, so many retail investors and institutional traders got suckered into this move right here. And then what does the market do? It completely unloads and takes all of it away. And now it's consolidating just like it did right here. And again, it's gonna try to sucker us in. My point is markets are a lot more volatile right now. They, they don't have a lot of liquidity. Liquidity is not gonna come in till middle of the second week. In other words, next week, you're going to see this type of trading action. You know, people are saying, oh, it's New Year's. People are, are, are now, stock markets are going nuts. No, that's not true. The real action doesn't begin till the second week of the year. You're gonna have a lot less liquidity. And when you have a little bit of liquidity and you have these algos running amok, it can create a major, major, major turbulence and a major issue for you guys. So. It's something we have to be very mindful of and it's something we have to pay very close attention to because these type of moves, these exaggerated moves as, as probably a great name to call them, don't seem to have sustainability. Before, before the algos, they had a lot of sustainability and follow through. I mean, again, if I was to look at this as a trader, I would tell you right now, the next bar looks higher, it's a breakout. I mean, any, any classic swing trader would tell you that. T-Buzz, myself, it's a breaking out of a month, one month high, it's time to buy and then look at what happens. So the rules have changed, which is why we're trading a lot more reversion to the mean strategies and reversion to the mean strategies, wait for pullbacks before getting in. So to give you an example of a reversion to the mean, let me show you what I mean. <laughs> I think I just rhymed there without trying to. So here's an example of reversion to the mean to the upside. You don't wait for the market to break out, you wait for a pullback and then you ride the trend. You wait for a pullback and then you ride the trend. When the market's going higher, uh, excuse me, lower, you wait for a retracement to the upside. You wait for a retracement to the upside. So the trading action that 
was predominant over the last 20 years, breakouts, momentum trading, they're starting to become more and more, um, they're starting to become less and less popular and be, they're becoming more prone to false breakouts and congestion. So again, I wanted to explain this to you before we get into it. And I figured it would be a great time to do this because markets are quiet today. There's not a lot going on, but don't, don't, don't fall prey. Don't be a sucker to these algo moves where the market's moving three, 400 points and there's just nothing behind it. It's happening a lot more now than before. And it's usually, it's, it's, it's very exaggerated. It's extremely exaggerated um, when volume is low, like on weeks like right now or last week or weeks heading into the holiday. So don't take this volume very seriously. Now, the bond market's a lot more harder to manipulate. It's a lot bigger, okay? And this is a TLT that follows, it's an ETF, TLT ETF that follows the long bond. So it's a lot harder to mani manipulate the bond market because it's equivalent, it's about 15, 20 times bigger than the stock market. And the bond market is acting like it's a holiday, very little direction, uh, very little subdued volume. So I would be looking at assets other than stocks last week of the year or first week of the year to give you a better understanding of what's happening. And based on what I'm seeing, this market is going, the stock market's going lower because bonds are going lower. And if bonds go lower, it puts more pressure on the stock market. So again, I wanted to kind of give you that idea and kind of give you something to walk away with last day of the year. And uh, so very, very important. Now let's talk about morning, uh, morning the, the, pre-market briefing, and I'll get into the nitty-gritty of the day. So unemployment data eased investors worried about futures rate hikes by Federal Reserve. I, I wouldn't hold my breath. It was just slightly higher. It wasn't all that much off. Meta rallied about 4%. Apple gained 2%. Again, exaggerated moves. Don't take these moves seriously. Now, here's the, some good, good stuff. The Labor Department reported yesterday that unemployment benefits rose 9,000, 9,000 to 225,000 and very much in line with expectations, hinting at some softening in the robust labor market. No, it isn't. It's not hinting at anything. It's pure noise. It's been around this number now for a year, I think a year and a half. There, there's no there's no robustness. There's no, uh, it's just softening. It's just, it's, just, it's just giving you explanation for what the market did yesterday. It's complete nonsense. The, I think the four week moving average is right at 225,000. Matter of fact, let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see how, how soft, or, and this is what I mean. This is reporters just trying to give you a story based on nothing. I think the moving average is, uh, uh, let's see here, 221,000, okay? So it, went, so it went to 225. Uh, look at the consensus. It's not off. It's, it's, not even, it's not even what we're talking about. So again, at the same time, continued jobless claims, which measures the amount of U.S. residents filing for ongoing unemployment benefits, rose to 1.71 million from 1.67 million above expectations. That's not happiness. Now the futures, the rate hikes are still pricing in a 0.25 at a 70 clip. If this bond market continues moving higher, uh, lower and yields increasing, the 0.50 will increase, but we're still at 71 versus 28, which is very, very, very solid. Uh, all eyes are focused on the, on the Chicago Purchasing Managers Index that comes out later today. That's this report right here that comes out and it's not gonna be a major, major report. It's not even, it doesn't even have a red headline. So it's not a major factor in the market, but with low volatility, you never know how, happen, how things happen or work out today, especially with these algos hunting for arbitrage opportunities. So Eurex is down 0.75 for the final day of the year. Industrial tech stocks giving up some of the previous session's sharp gains. Remember, they open up after us and they gave up the gains that, Anyway, you guys get it. European stocks are on the course for the worst year since 2018 as Russia's war in Ukraine, high inflation, and aggressive monetary policy weighted on risk appetite around the world. China closed higher as market participants look to end the year on an optimistic note. Yeah, don't hold your breath. However, the Chinese benchmark ended the year down 15% after antivirus controls and a crackdown on corporate debt weighted on the world's second largest economy. And we don't really know what's going on with their COVID cases, but we do know that US and Italy and other countries are not letting uh, China in without a COVID test. So they're not trusting this data. It, uh, the Nikkei, Japan closed flat, uh, giving up initial gains, finished the year down 9.4%, the highest annual decline since 2018. Are you noticing a pattern here? Uh, China's down. Japan is down. There's no major earnings today. 
Uh, there's no major headlines today because it's the last day of the trading year. Now, I want to show you guys something. Yesterday, the markets rallied really hard, right? Like 300 points. Only 44 stocks are making 20-day breakouts. 44 stocks. A good amount is 200, 300, 400. You've got 44. That's nothing. That's noise. And that's why I'm saying these moves are exaggerated. There's just not a lot of stuff going on. So I wouldn't be holding my breath for major, major moves. The bond market is not going against the trend it's still lower and it's still below the 50-day let me make sure that's a 50 yeah make sure it is and it's below the 50-day moving average that tells me that the sentiment is still relatively bearish now sectors very important healthcare remember i told you last year that healthcare was going to be the number one sector that healthcare was going to close the year best guess what the number one sector is healthcare i told you a year ago industrial mostly war stocks and energy's coming back and consumer staples too and then some financials stick to healthcare industrial energy and consumer staples for now maybe a little bit of utilities otherwise I, I i wouldn't be a buyer of any of these other sectors unless you're doing swing trading for very 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 short-term moves um, in terms of what stocks are leading i wanted to show you this you still have all the energy and the healthcare and the defensive stocks. Notice there's really no hanky-panky stocks in here. It's all very, very, very defensive, all right? Very, very, very defensive. And again, there's not a lot of momentum to the downside. And if you look to the to the weakest stocks, look at this. Dish, Align, Catalan, Generac, Tesla, uh, Realty Trust, Expedia, Expedia, PayPal, Red Flag, CarMax, Amazon. So consumer stocks are not doing well, which is why we're still short consumer stocks. Now, before I depart, there's a few things I want to talk to you guys about. The overall market, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ looks like it's bottoming out and it can go up for a few days or get stuck in this range. The Dow Jones, on the other hand, still has, still has substantial, substantial downside to go. We're barely above the 200-day moving average. If you look at the SPY, um, we're not really holding on all that well. We're still in this, in this, let's look at the monthly levels. Look at the month or the last couple of weeks. We're just, this is intraday. Look at that. Highs and lows. Just trending, trending, going from one level to the other. Very, very little meaningful trading range. So be very, very cautious right now. Um, expect some, some, maybe some holding pattern in the nasdaq and maybe some more corrective pressure in the s p and the dow because blue chips are a lot more uh expensive right now than tech stocks and that has to be arbitraged folks take it easy for the first few days of the year let it market show its hand we're going to be doing a lot more algo trading in 2023 and holding trades for a shorter period of time because i think market dynamics are going to be changing and i'll be talking about that in my vip room and tomorrow now you might be asking roger what's going on tomorrow well folks tomorrow saturday at 10 a.m i'm going live with my top three stocks to watch for the first trading day of 2023 i'm excited about this now these are actionable ideas brought to you by one of my newest strategies now it doesn't use fundamentals it doesn't use technical indicators instead it focuses on spotting a few very very specific stock patterns I want you guys to register for Saturday's event, get more information about how do my strategy works, and click on the link in your email. Don't do it now. Don't procrastinate. Set some New Year's resolutions. It's time to get ahead. I don't want you guys to miss out on this. One of the patterns that I'm, I'll be reviewing, for example, boasts a 100% win rate on exactly 146 stocks over five years of testing. Now. We don't know if it's gonna continue going forward. Let's not get carried away. But I'm very excited about what, we've been, what we've been seeing so far and I can't wait to share it with you. You can see exactly what I mean by clicking the link below. Don't miss out. And the live class is happening tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday. If you don't know where the link is, follow the link in the Wealth Press YouTube channel and you'll see it there. Like my video, subscribe, and wish me a happy New Year's. I've been doing this every day all year for you. Bye, guys. Have a great, great year. I'll see you in my VIP room, and I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Don't be late. Bye.